Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Uh, we've been out in the greenhouse working this morning. We're trying to get some of our tomatoes repotted and uh, getting everything ready so the next week or so we can get everything in the ground depending on the weather. We decided, being we're going to be doing the Cherokee uh, garden this year, maybe we should go ahead and start some of our plants ahead of time to kind of get a jump on everything. and. When I was going through all of the uh, squash seeds that I have, and I don't, I don't just have Cherokee things, I have things from all other types of squash that we really been wanting to try here. So what I decided was, you know, I better check the genus names of these things before I start uh, doing this because cross-pollination is one quick way of losing your heirloom seeds. And a lot of people don't realize this. now. Uh, people do it with tomatoes all the time. They do it with peppers all the time. I see them. They have all their tomatoes in one field and they, you know, they say they're saving their seeds. And, and in my heart, I know that uh, that's not the right way to do it. They're going to end up with cross, cross pollinated seeds. Uh, tomatoes, for instance, need to be at least 100 yards apart in order to save true seeds. I have successfully done it at 100 feet apart, but it's kind of cautious to do it that way because bees can, uh, and wind can carry pollen, especially if it's a windy time of the year. Uh, you know, you can have issues like that. Uh, you know, corn pollinates very far. You know, you, 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 corn can go a half a mile. You know, so you can't have different kinds of corn together like that. But in the squash, I was looking into here, you know, I have some, uh, I have some Hope I Pale Gray Squash that I was wanting to plant because a lot of these are uh, ancient seeds that I've been given uh, from different parts of the world. And I wanted to be able to see how they do here, but at the same time, I don't want cross-pollination. I want true seeds. Now these are the, uh, I'm not sure if I'll pronounce this right, but they're the Curcurbita Maxima variety and I also wanted to plant some of my uh, uh, North Georgia candy roasters in my Cherokee garden. Well the Hope Eyes are going to have to go to the garden all by themselves somewhere. Now the uh, North Georgia candy roasters are the Kirkabita Maximas also so I there's no way I can put these two squash anywhere close together because they're going to cross pollinate. And if they cross pollinate, then I lose my true heirloom variety. And so we're probably going to have to keep them somewhere on my property, at least a hundred yards apart or more, uh, maybe even further than that, just to ensure that we guarantee good seed. Now, those are not the only two varieties of squash we want to plant. Because we're sitting out here, we're getting ready to put seeds in pots to get them started so we can transplant them into the garden once they're going. And this weather squares away and we have no danger of frost left. The other one is the spaghetti squash. We love spaghetti squash. But now I got to look and the spaghetti squash or the Kirkabita pepo, which means they're a, a completely different genus and if I'm understanding correctly, I can plant those closer to each other without the, uh, without the worry of cross-pollination. Now, we also like yellow crookneck squash here. Uh, the genus of yellow crookneck squash is also Kirkabita pepo also. So the spaghetti squash and the yellow crookneck squash cannot go anywhere close to one another because they will cross-pollinate and I'll lose my true heirloom seeds. But the yellow crookneck could go with the Hope Eye Gray or they could also go with the North Georgia Candy Roasters and not cross pollinate. And guys, this is one thing that is very important when you're planting things, is make sure you look at the genus names on these things to be sure. Uh, one of the things you want to check out are cucumbers and watermelons. A lot of them have the same genus names and you can cross your cucumbers with different things like your watermelons can cross with different things and cantaloupes can cross with different things. 
and you end up and people wonder why in the world does my stuff not taste like it's supposed to taste or why does it have a off taste a lot of times it's just simply because it cross pollinated and you didn't have a pure variety so I made this short video just for this purpose because while I was sitting here this morning it's pouring down raining outside and I'm working in a greenhouse trying to get things potted I came in jumped on the computer because I just wanted to be sure about genus names before I actually wrote the names on sticks because I'm going to put their genus names on the sticks also so that when I get ready to plant them I know that I don't have any kind of issues now I have other several other different types of squash I'm going to be planting but I've got to find on my property where I can put these squash and not have a risk of cross-pollination. So guys, if you're in a tight area and you plan on saving seeds, uh, you better just plant one variety. Because <laughs> if you go in there and start planting two or three different varieties or something thinking you're going to save seeds from, it ain't going to happen because you'll end up with a hybrid. So thought I'd throw this quick video out out there to you. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.